Welcome back out here for another glorious day. Donnie is over there getting everything cleaned up. Got the Pete looking sexy again. That's where I get this thing washed like twice a week. Man, he did a freaking kick, kick butt job on this thing. Got the interior all cleaned up. It did rain, but we're getting ready for the Florida truck meet down in South Florida. Dang, look at that, all clean. And uh, we're gonna be taking my new trailer down there. I've readjusted the brakes on it again. And hopefully we can make the short trip because we're going to a big Florida truck show. And I don't want to take the old right now. I'd rather take my new trailer. So we'll just have to deal with the brake issues for now getting down there. But anyways, that's not what today's video is about. It's all about the uh, big wheel loader here, the Iron Giant. So let's dig in. So I know my last few videos have been about me just talking a lot for well, the last video with the FM Florida Motor, FMCSA. So we're still dealing with that, getting all of our stuff straight. Um, they don't really want us doing much out of state right now while we're getting all of our paperwork online. Understandable. So we're doing that. But another problem I've been dealing with over the past couple weeks, I really shared with you, I'm trying to be more transparent on the channel, is our big wheel loader here. So as you all know, we went out and did a wheel at start video. Five, four, four three, two, one. Wheel at start. <laughs> Why can't we ever get a difficult one? It is ridiculous. And I swear, it's always these big Cummins that just fire right up almost instantly. And the reason we did a wheel of start video is because I was approached, well, I wasn't approached, a friend of mine that's in the construction business said that, hey, some friends of his uh, had this wheel loader, a construction company, not gonna mention any names, and uh, they wanted to sell it because it had been abandoned on their property. And anyhow, so they told me, said, hey, we want to we want to sell it. Do you want to buy it? I said, well, let me go there and look at it. And at first I went there and looked at it and you could see the kind of conditions. I was like, well, I don't really need it. This is before I was back to doing YouTube videos. It was just too much money. I didn't really want to mess with it. It didn't really make sense to buy it if I couldn't film it. Well, I'm back to YouTube. So I hit them up and said, hey, is it still for sale? And they said, yes. So I went out there and paid them for it. We got it running. You guys know the rest of the story there. And uh, we got it back to the shop, started fixing it up, doing stuff on it. And about two and a half weeks ago roughly I get an email from a random person and said person email says hey um, I got some questions about the Kawasaki wheel loader I'm like okay no problem I thought maybe they're wanting to buy it or who knows so I call them and they basically proceed to tell me that they're the owners of the wheel loader not the construction company I got it from and they wanted their wheel loader back and basically were borderline accusing me of stealing this even though it was an abandoned machine that had been on the property for God knows how long, guys. Like, you've seen how long it's sitting there. You've seen the hydraulic hose we pulled out of this thing that was absolutely just completely rotten. Like, there's no way it had only been sitting there. The f guy claims it had been sitting there for four or five years. There is no way it had been sitting there four or five years and the hydraulic hose that we pulled out and replaced had been rotted that badly underneath the machine. And said person that's claiming he's the owner told me that he had just taken the batteries out of it and was planning on getting it started and driving it out of there six or eight months ago. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't believe it's yours until you bring proof forward showing that it's yours. And until then, leave me alone. So I bought, called the construction company I bought the machine from and I said, hey, there's a guy contacting me, said he's the owner, just a full warning of what's going on. And they said, okay, well, if anything comes of it, we'll let you know and blah, blah, blah. So literally the following day, I get a phone call from the construction company I bought it from, them letting me know they're gonna have to buy it back from me. I'm like, well, that's not gonna happen because you gave me a bill of sale where I bought it and this other guy isn't bringing any proof forward that he's the owner two or three weeks ago. So I'm like, it's not for sale because it's just flat out not. I don't wanna sell it. There's way too much video content to be made with this machine here. That's just not worth me selling. Like it'd be hard to put a number on it because you know, for all the content I can make with it. Um, I'm sure some of you guys can understand that from a YouTube aspect. So that kind of like got me a little on edge about the whole situation. I've, you know, I had a bill of sale, so I'm safe. It's now like a civil matter because one person saying they own it, the construction company, it was left on the property they bought and have owned for like the last four or five years. And it's just this whole big just mess. And a few more weeks go by. We do the service on it. I start, you know, it's my my machine, so I do the service on it. We put the forks on it, things like that. And I get another phone call 
from the construction company and the guy apparently has brought them proof that he's the owner we confirmed the serial number and all this stuff and it turns out he is the one that bought it 20 years ago literally and uh there's no way i don't say there's no way I don't, how do i put this so the guy is the owner of it he has a bill of sale because machines like this don't have titles they're not registered so the next thing i i say is like well he abandoned it on your property and you sold it to me so i hate to put the construction company in position but i'm the i they sold it to me i have a bill of sale from them so now it's their problem to either make that guy happy or make me happy or one of us is going to end up going to court over the whole deal so i don't know what's happening quite yet with the whole situation over what's going to happen with the wheel loader are we going to go to court are they going to come pay me for it or am i going to keep it are they going to pay the other guy i don't know the whole situation but what it boiled down to is the fella that left it abandoned he had no idea i had even drove it away from where it was sitting at he seen my his grandson saw my tiktok video and called and told the grandpa that his i think it's your wheel loader or something like that i'm not sure and now all of a sudden this fella that owns it obviously wants it now that it's up and running and working perfectly which i don't blame him but at the same time you know it puts me in a bad spot it puts all three of us in a bad spot because the old man shouldn't have left it there period he should have got it fixed as a single property that wasn't his for god knows how long so and I, don't, and I don't really know the laws i know there's a few abandonment laws where if you leave something sitting for a long time that you become the owner of it but you're supposed to hold a public auction send notifications and i i don't really know what are the exact laws maybe someone can come drop some comments down below and kind of bring that to light but as of right now we're in limbo with the wheel loader we're not gonna be doing anything with it until um i have a meeting with this construction company next week and we figure out what's going to happen because I don't really want to spend any more money on it if it's not going to be here anymore. So I will let you guys know what comes of it, hopefully. We'll see. Back to our regular scheduled programming. It is still drizzly, but we're getting the tires cleaned up on the trailer. Uh, we're going to start loading some trucks up. Justin almost has the little green flatbed clutch all put in and done. That's going to go in the front. They're going to put a TRX on the back. We're going to be ready to head down to Homestead for the Florida Truck Show. Or Truck Meet, whatever they're calling it nowadays. So we got the flat nasty out here on the lift and Jut got the old clutch out. We've got the new South Bend iron centered clutch. It's like a sled pulling clutch basically in the shop. Let's go check it out. Here she is. There is no give to this thing either. They're like a grinding disc material. Pretty serious stuff. Well guys, that's a wrap. I'm gonna throw some bonus footage in here where we got the turbo put on the flat nasty last night. We will see you all at Homestead Raceway for the Florida truck meet. Peace. All right, back out here in the shop, getting the flatbed fixed up. Get ready to go to the Florida truck meet burnout contest. You guys probably know we blew a turbo up last time we had it out. We've got a brand new HX35 based turbocharger here from DAP, Diesel Auto Power, with a 66 millimeter billet wheel inside this baby that we're putting on the flatty. Hey, why? Easy on the switch. Oh, why? <laughs> what are right, we fixing why. it for? <laughs> Just another no. turbo down the drain. Nothing new. So, uh, it's got my after hours helper here. <laughs> Getting the old one off. Well, I've been working on uploading some tractors on the internet, and Justin's got our turbo com left. coming out in pieces. Left of it. <laughs> Look at all the oil everywhere. <laughs> I wonder how much crap went through the intercooler. That's, probably where, that's the turbine, what's left of it. I know, there's probably a ton of stuff up in the intercooler pipe here. Are we worried about it? No. <laughs> yeah, all the stuff that's got yeah, that's blended all off of there is now up inside the intercooler. So I'm gonna slap the new one on here, I guess. Just like flush that. Flush it out of the intercooler, we'll be good to go. Oh, we're gonna flush it out? Yeah, definitely flush it out. Okay. Make sure it's all clear. All right. The heater grid will catch the rest. So. You're gonna do it the right way. We're a one-legged dog. Three-legged. You doing her that way? You doing her that way? How you doing her like that? Well, shout out to my mechanic Jut <laughs> for getting this turbo swap done in about 30, 35 minutes or so. Should be ready to fire up. Kyle, you want to start it? Yeah. Now you just sat down. Yep. First start up. First start up. Make sure it's in neutral before you kill us. And it don't shut off the key. You got to stall it. So, we have 
not filled the turbo with oil. So let's go. Full send. Got pressure. 